In this problem, we're going to take a look at a couple of examples of what we mean by the dimension of a subspace. We've talked about subspaces in previous videos. A subspace is just a subset of a vector space that remains closed under scalar multiplication and vector addition. In part A here, we're going to be working with a subspace of R3, and the subspace is given by the set of vectors whose elements are x plus y, y, and minus 3x. So x, y here are any real valued numbers. So pick any x, any y in the reals, and then form the vector that has this form. So its first coordinate is always x plus y, its second coordinate is always y, and its third coordinate is minus 3x. There's an infinite number of choices for x and y, so there are an infinite number of vectors of this form we can construct. And that entire set, which we indicate by these curly brackets, brackets is what we mean the subspace of R3. It's this infinite collection of vectors that are in R3, but they all have this form. So this is the subspace we're going to be working with. And what we're going to do is we're going to find a basis for this subspace. And once we have the basis, it'll be very easy to determine what we call the dimension of the subspace. So first of all, what do we mean by basis? Well, if you remember what a basis is, a basis is a set of vectors, and it's a set of vectors that allows us to write another set of vectors as a linear combination of those basis vectors. So if we can find a basis for this subspace, then any vector in the subspace will be able to write as a linear combination of the vectors in the basis. So we need to find some fixed set of vectors such that we can write any vector of this form as a linear combination of vectors in the basis. Well this one and problems like this that look like this are actually pretty easy because we can actually factor out the x and the y very nicely in this problem. So every vector in our subspace has this form and you'll note pretty easily that I can write it like this. I can write this as x times the vector 1, 0, minus 3. And I figured that out because there's 1x here and there are no x's here and there are minus 3x's here. I can write it like that plus y times the vector 1, 1, 0. Again, because there's a single y here, a single y here, and no y's here. So this should be fairly obvious why this is true, just being able to decompose this vector like this. And once I've written it like this, things look pretty obvious now in terms of what the basis should be. I've been able to write this arbitrary vector as a linear combination of this fixed vector and this fixed vector. The linear combination or coefficients are the x and the y. So really what I've done here is I've written it as a linear combination of these vectors. So these vectors, the vector 1, 0, minus 3 and 1, 1, 0, must be a basis for the subspace. So this collection of two vectors, 1, 0, minus 3 and 1, 1, 0, these two vectors are a basis for the subspace because any vector in the subspace I can write as a linear combination of them by choosing x and y appropriately. If you give me a vector in this subspace, I'll figure out what x is, I'll figure out what y is, which will be pretty easy to do because I can just inspect these two coordinates. Once I know what the x and y are, I can write the vector you gave me as x times this vector plus y times this vector. So it is indeed a basis. So what about the dimension of this subspace? That's what we would like to figure out now. Well, that's pretty easy now that we have a basis because the dimension of a subspace or vector space is simply equal to the number of vectors in its basis. So since I have two vectors in the basis, that means that this is a two-dimensional subspace. So we would say the dimension of this subspace is equal to two, or this is a two-dimensional subspace. All right, let's look at another example. This one's going to be a little bit easier. Instead of working in R3, we'll actually work in R2. And this will be nice because I can actually draw kind of a visual representation of this subspace a little bit better than I could try having to draw something in three dimensions. So the subspace of R2 we're going to be dealing with is the set of all vectors of the form x, 3x. So these have all have length 2, but the first coordinate is always x, the second coordinate is always 3x, and this is for x as any real valued number. So for instance, if I let x be 0, the element 0, 0 is in this subspace. Or if I let x be 2, the vector 2, 6 is in this subspace. There's an infinite number of values I can choose for x, so there are actually an infinite number of vectors in this set. So that is the subspace. 
And every vector in this subspace can be written as follows. So we're going to decompose this just like we did the first, first problem. I can write it as x times 1, 3. So every vector can be written as x times 1, 3. So this decomposition or linear combination is almost trivial because there's only one vector that I need. But again, this tells me what the basis is. Since every vector can be written as x times this fixed vector right here, that means a basis for this particular subspace consists of the singular vector 1, 3. So this is a subspace of R2 that has a single dimension. So this subspace of R2 is a singular dimension or a dimension 1 subspace. You can say different ways. Let's think about what this means. If I want to think about the plane R2, so there's two dimensions in R2, so I can think of this as my xy plane. What does the set of points defined by this subspace look like? Well, this subspace consists of all points that have form x, 3x. So if I, I know that 0, 0 is in there, we already talked about that when I let x equal 0. If I let x equal 1, the point 1, 3 is in there. If I let x equal negative 1, the point minus 1, minus 3 is in that. So you can see what's happening. I'm really moving along this line right here. So really, the set of vectors that is in this subspace really consists of every single point along this diagonal line. And we know that lines have dimension 1, so that's why this is a one-dimensional subspace. The whole plane, this whole xy plane, is two-dimensional. It's a flat surface. The elements in the subspace that we're working with here, this subspace of R2, consists of just that line, and it's a one-dimensional quantity. So this actually goes off in both directions for forever, but this is why we think of this as a one-dimensional subspace, because it really is just a line in the R2 plane. So that concludes this example. We worked uh, two quick examples of figuring out the dimension of a subspace. Both of these examples were somewhat easy because we were able to come up with a basis pretty quickly. And once you have a basis for a subspace or a vector space, the dimension is always just the number of elements in the basis. The first example, we had two vectors in the basis, so it was a two-dimensional subspace of R3. In the second part, we worked with a subspace of R2 that only had one vector in its basis, so it was a one-dimensional subspace of R2.